Oh, hey. Happy Easter, you guys. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well today. Believe it or not, I actually got the day off. I know what you're thinking, but don't worry. I'm on the parking team now. Well, uh, I hope you guys really are having a good day, and I hope you guys are able to celebrate Easter uh, with your families. I didn't always really enjoy Easter, especially when I was younger. I didn't like it as much as I like holidays like Christmas or my birthday or uh, other ones like that. But as I got older and I started to learn more about what Easter was all about, wow, I, it, it's one of my favorites now. So Christmas is, is the holiday where we learn about Jesus being born here on earth, right? But Easter is when we learn about why Jesus came to earth. Come on. After Jesus was arrested, he was led to the high priest. The religious leaders were trying to find a reason to kill Jesus, but they could not. The high priest asked, are you the Messiah, the son of God? Jesus replied, yes, that's right. The high priest said, he has spoken against God. He deserves to die. The religious leaders refused to believe that Jesus was God's son. In the morning, the religious leaders led Jesus to Pilate, the governor. Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked. Yes, that's right, Jesus replied. What should I do with Jesus? Pilate asked the crowd. Crucify him, they answered. Pilate did not think Jesus had done anything wrong, but he handed Jesus over and said, do whatever you want. The governor's soldiers put a scarlet robe on Jesus. They made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Then they mocked him. Here is the king of the Jews. They beat Jesus and led him away to be killed. The soldiers nailed Jesus to a cross. They put a sign above his head that said, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Two criminals were crucified next to him. Darkness covered the land. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus shouted again and then he died. Suddenly, the curtain in the temple sanctuary split in two from top to bottom and there was an earthquake. One of the men guarding Jesus' body said, This man really was God's son. Jesus was buried in a tomb. A stone was sealed in front of the tomb so that no one could steal Jesus' body. On the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. An angel of the Lord rolled back the stone and sat on it. The guards were so afraid that they fainted. The angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus. He is not here. He has risen just like he said he would. The women left the tomb quickly. They ran to tell the disciples the good news. Just then, Jesus greeted them. The women worshipped him. Don't be afraid, Jesus told them. Tell my followers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. Jesus appeared to Peter and then to the other disciples. Jesus also appeared to more than 500 people who followed him. Many people witnessed that Jesus is alive. Jesus' death and resurrection is the center of the gospel. In Adam, we were spiritually dead in sin, but Jesus died to pay for our sins. Jesus is alive. God gives new life to everyone who trusts in Jesus. He is risen. For thousands of years, Christians have used this phrase to, to greet one another and also declare the good news. Now, when someone says he is risen, one way that you can respond is by saying he is risen indeed. Can we try that together? So when I say he is risen, I want you to say he is risen indeed. Okay? He is risen. Very good. Awesome. The crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus three days later um, is the center of this huge story of the Bible. Ever since the very beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned against God by eating the fruit that they weren't supposed to, it damaged the entire relationship that humanity had with God. 
No one could live in a true loving relationship with God the way that it was intended. And the best that they could do was offering sacrifices uh, multiple times throughout the year. For generation after generation in following the Israelites, we learned that they had gone through so many hardships and so many different times evil and bad things happened. And sometimes in the Bible it might look like evil really would prevail. Could you think about what it would look like if you were one of Jesus' disciples? Seeing all the healing and all the wisdom that he had, believing that he was the Son of God, and then seeing him put to death on a crucifix. At some point, they probably had lost a lot of the hope that they originally had. But we know that Jesus didn't stay dead. At one point, Jesus' lungs filled with air again. His heart began to beat. And in this tremendous way, God defeated all of sin and death. Jesus is alive. He was alive then, and he's still alive today. Jesus' sacrifice was perfect. He had never, never, never sinned, but yet he took all of our sins on his shoulders and took them with him as he died. But when Jesus rose again, the sin did not rise with him. He took every mistake that we've ever made, every mistake that I've ever made, and got rid of it. And if we can trust in Jesus and believe in Jesus, we have the promise of eternal life. I want you guys to think about that. If you've ever maybe made a mistake and someone else has taken blame for it, that's exactly what Jesus has done for you and done for this entire world. Guys, Easter is such a huge, huge holiday, but really it's such a huge part of our identity and who we can and how we can look back and, and see how much Jesus has done for us and seeing how much God truly does love us. So guys, I hope that as you guys uh, read through your questions and you pray uh, together, just remember these things. I'll see you around. Bye.